In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural Saturn planet material in Blender. So in this tutorial, we'll actually be creating three different procedural node groups. So for the stars in the background, we are going to be creating this simple procedural setup to make stars in the background of our scene. And this is going to be in the world nodes. And then for the objects, we'll be creating two procedural materials. So we'll be creating a procedural material for Saturn, and then also another procedural material for Saturn's rings. And then after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join the materials together into these custom node groups. So first we have the Saturn planet, and for this custom node group, we have the overall scale. We also just have the ring scale if you want to have more rings. We also have this rings blur value, so you can blur the rings if you want. To. Then we also have the roughness of the material. We also have the atmosphere brightness. So there's a very subtle atmosphere on the edges and this will change the atmosphere brightness. And then we also have this atmosphere color. And then finally we have the bump strength. And then we'll be creating another procedural material for Saturn's rings. And you can see this material is actually a bit transparent. So for this material, again, we have the overall scale of the entire material. Then we also have the rings scale one, and then also the rings scale two. And then just like the other material, we have this rings blur value. So you can blur this up to add more detail and make it look like a very large scale planet. Then we also have the rings randomize. Then we also have the rings transparent. So because the rings are made out of like asteroids and rock and ice and things like that, then there's actually going to be a transparency so you can see through the rings. And so you can control the transparency with this rings transparent. And then we have the roughness of the material. And then we also have the bump strength. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files of this tutorial, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And purchasing is a great way to help support this channel. And if you'd like to purchase all of my materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. And my Ultimate Material Pack comes with all of my procedural materials, and they're all pre-set up for Blender's asset browser, and they're also sorted into different catalogs, and every material is also joined into a custom node group. And if you'd like to learn how to create more more of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And after following this video, if you enjoy creating planets in Blender, then I also have some other planet tutorials, so I'll have a link in the description to all of these tutorials here in the description if you'd like to learn how to create some more planets. So I'm going to start by setting up the 3D scene and modeling the Saturn planet. So I'll select everything and let's just delete everything. So I'm now going to go to the add menu, let's go to mesh, and I'm going to be adding an icosphere. Now to make this nice and smooth, right above me I'm going to click on the add icosphere settings, and I'll turn these subdivisions all the way up to like a 6, and then I can close the add icosphere settings. Alright, so now we have a nice smooth round sphere, and using the object context menu I'll shade the object smooth. So I now want to create the rings, so I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to add a circle. And then I will hit the tab key to go into edit mode, and I can go to top view by hitting the 7 on the numpad, and let's just scale this up a bit. So I will scale it up so it's about that big, and then I'm going to hit E to extrude, and then after that I'll hit S to scale, and we're going to scale up the mesh that we've extruded, and I'll scale it to about there. Alright, that's looking pretty good, so I'll go back to object mode, and then I'm going to press Control 2 and Control 2 is going to add the subdivision surface modifier. So now you can see it's nice and smooth on the edges. So I now want to add a camera, so let's go to the Add menu, and we can go right down here and just add a regular camera. And then you can move your view to wherever you want the camera to be. I'm going to go here to the front view, and I'll just zoom in a bit, and then I'll press Control alt numpad 0 to bring the camera to where we are. And then if you select the camera by clicking up here to select it, you can hit G to grab and move the camera around. Also to bring the camera back, I'll hit G, and then after I hit G, I will hit the Z key twice, and I'll just bring this back a bit. So I'm now going to select both of the planets, but not the camera, and I want to rotate the planets. So I will rotate them, and then I'll type in negative 25. So negative 25 and hit enter, and then I'm also going to select the camera, and I'll move the camera up, and I'm going to also rotate the camera down a little bit, so that you can see kind of the tops of the rings a little bit better. Now I do also think those rings are just a little bit big, so real quick I'll go back into edit mode, and I'll just scale the rings down so they're a little bit smaller, so that's a bit better. And then make sure you save the Blender file by clicking file and you can click on save as and just save your project to your computer. 
Now here is what the material looks like in Blender EV. So you could do it in Blender EV if you want to, it does look okay. However, I'm going for realism and I did design this for cycles. So I'll be using the cycles rendering engine for this tutorial. So if you click right here to the render properties, I'm gonna be using the cycles rendering engine. So now I'm gonna hold down the Z button and I'll move my mouse up into the rendered view. And then I also wanna add a boundary to the camera. So I'll press control B and I'll drag a box around the camera just so that it'll only render what the camera can see. And then there's a few more settings that I want to change. So if I go right down here to the color management, I want to set the view transform to filmic and I'll change the look to very high contrast and this will pop out the colors and make it more saturated. All right, so now let's create the stars in the background. So I'm going to click right up here to go to the shading workspace. So over here on the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right here and I'll go into the render mode and then I have the shader editor right over here. Now to edit the world, I'm going to click right here on object and I'll change this to world instead. And this is in the shader editor. So you can see we have a background and then the world output. So right here on the color, I'm just going to make this fully black so that it is a nice space background. And now I'm going to be adding a texture for the stars. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop the Voronoi here. And I want to take the distance value and I want to put that into the color of the background. So now if you kind of look around your scene, you can see we have all these little dots. Now I want to change the size of the dots. So here on the scale, I'll turn this to like a 200. So it'll look more like stars. Now the problem with this is that the dots are actually black. So I want to change the colors. So I'll press shift A. I'll go here to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's put the color ramp between the Voronoi and the background. And then to change the colors, I can drag the black tab and the white tab together and I'm actually going to flip both of the values. So the white tab will be over here and then the black tab is going to be much closer and it'll be to about here. So now if I go into the camera view and kind of zoom in, you can definitely see those stars there in the background. And then also I want to make them a bit brighter. So let's go here to the background world and I'm going to turn the strength to five so that it is brighter. So now you can see some little stars there in the background. All right, so that is it for the stars background. So I'll click on the world here and I'll change this back to objects so we can add the normal object materials. Now, before we create the materials, I also want to add some lighting because we can't see the planet. It's fully black. So I'm going to click right back here to go to the layout. So for the lighting, I'm going to go to the add menu. Let's go here to light and I'm going to add a sunlight. So then I can move this sunlight up and I'm just going to bring it over here kind of to the side. And then if I go here on the side, I will rotate the light over kind of like that. And if I go to top view, I also want to rotate it over kind of like that. So now if I go into the camera view, you can see we have some nice lighting there on the side of the planet. Now let's click right here on the object data properties and we can change some of the light settings. So I'm going to turn the strength up to four so that it's quite a bit brighter. And then if I zoom into the planet, you can see there's a very soft shadow here, but I want to make this shadow very sharp. So here on the angle, I'm just going to turn the angle to one and that way it is more sharp. So you can see if I turn the angle up, you can see it's very blurred. Or if I turn the angle down, it's much sharper. So I'll just turn it to a one. All right, so we can now create the two materials for the planet. So let's click right back over here to go to the shading workspace. And I'm going to click on the planet here. We're going to be creating the planet material first. So then right up here, I will click on new to add a new material. And I can just rename this to Saturn planet. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial to preview the different nodes. So to enable the Node Wrangler, you can click on Edit and go to the Preferences. And then over there on the Add-ons tab, just search for Node Wrangler and you can checkmark the Node Wrangler add-on. And I'll show you how to use it in the video. So I'll press Shift A and let's go here to the search and I'll start by adding a wave texture. We'll drop the wave texture here and then to preview the wave texture, I can control shift and select the node. So if you control shift and then select different node, that's using the feature of the node wrangler and it's going to preview the node on the object. So we can control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. And then also with the wave texture selected, I'll press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And that's another feature of the node wrangler. And I want to use the object coordinates. So let's put the object into the vector. The object coordinates works really well for procedural textures. So now we can change some of the wave texture settings. So I want to change the X here to Z instead. And that way the waves will be going back and forth. And then there's a few settings that I want to change. So I want to turn the scale way down so there's not as many waves. So I'm going to change the scale to like a 
0.12. Now a 0.12 is very small. You can see there's just white and black. There's basically just one wave, but we're going to be distorting it and adding more textures to give it more detail. Let's also turn the distortion up a little bit. So I'll turn the distortion to a 0.05, just that it's slightly distorted and you'll be able to see it taking effect more later. And then also the detail here, let's turn that all the way up to 15. And also the detail scale, I'll turn this up to 15 as well. Now I want to use this wave texture to distort another texture. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture, and let's drop the Voronoi here. And I actually want to put the Voronoi here after the wave texture. So basically the wave texture color will be going into the vector, and so it'll be distorting the placement of the Voronoi. And then you can just control shift and select the Voronoi texture, and we want to control shift and select the Voronoi texture until we're previewing the distance value. So without the wave texture distorting the Voronoi, you can see it's just a bunch of little dots. However, when the wave texture is going into the vector, those lines there are going to be distorting it. So now you can see that the Voronoi is all stretched around the planet. And then I want to change a few settings. So I'm going to click on the F1 here and I'm going to change it to smooth F1 instead. And then let's change the scale to eight. So it's a little bit bigger and I can see more of those waves. And then I'll leave the smoothness and the random at one. And also if you zoom in very closely, you can see they are slightly wobbly and that is because of this distortion. So if you want the waves to be more wobbly, you could turn the distortion up, but I'm going to leave it to a very small number. Now I also want to mix this in with some noise to make it more smooth. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's put the noise texture here underneath the wave. And then I want to take the mapping and let's put the vector into the vector of the noise texture and I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So I want this to be very noisy and detailed because it's going to make the rings more smooth. So I want to turn the scale up to 50 and then let's also turn the detail to the max of 15. Now here on the roughness, I'm going to turn this way up to like a 0.8. So now if I zoom way in, you can see it's very detailed and smooth but you can still kind of see the noise and I want to make it very, very detailed. So this distortion value, I'm going to turn this up to 100. So now that it's being distorted by 100, if I zoom way in, you can kind of see that noise there, but now it's very, very noisy and it kind of looks like white noise. So I now want to mix this noise texture in with the Voronoi texture. So I'm going to click and drag to select these nodes and bring them over so we have a bit more space and I can press shift A and I'll go to the search and to mix them together, I'm going to use the mix color node. So let's drop the mix color node right here and I want to take the Voronoi distance and I want to put that into color A and then I want to take this noise texture factor and I'm going to put that into color B and then I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. Now I want to click on this mix here and I'm going to go down here and change it to the linear light instead. So by changing it to linear light, if I zoom way in, it's basically going to distort the Voronoi texture, which is being stretched. So if I turn the factor all the way to zero, you can see it's basically just using this Voronoi texture and it doesn't have any noise. But then as I turn the factor up more and more, it's going to make it all noisy. Now I also want to add some more details with some more waves. So what I'm going to do is click and drag the box like these two nodes, and then I'll press control shift D. Control shift D will duplicate the nodes, but keep the wires plugged up and I'll just put them up here and then I can control shift and select the Voronoi to preview it. So we can now change some of the settings. So here on the scale, because I want this to be more detailed, I'm going to turn this up to a 0.17 instead. And then this distortion, I don't want any distortion. So I'll turn that back to zero and then the detail I'll leave at 15, but the detail scale, I'm just going to turn this back to one. And then this Voronoi texture, I'll just leave the settings the same. So I'm now going to mix this Voronoi texture with this other one, and we're going to mix them together so we have more detail. So I'll click on this linear light here, this mix color, and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And then I want to take the linear light result and let's put that into color B. And then I want to take this Voronoi texture distance and let's put that into color A. And then I can control shift and select the linear light. So you can see we now have more details with more lines, but they're still very blurred. So I now want to create all of the colors for the planet. So I'll press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp and I'll put the color ramp here after the linear light. Now I want to make lots of colors and have it be very detailed. So I'm actually going to click here on the side of the node and drag it out so that it's very long. And then I can drag this back here. And also this principal shader, I can drag this way back here. So we now have this color ramp and it's very long and we can make a bunch of different colors in here and that will add more lines and it will add more colors and make it look more like a planet. 
So I'm going to click on this first black color here, and I'm going to make this kind of a brownish color. So I'll make it a bit lighter and then make it kind of a brown. Now I want to have about 12 different tabs. So we have one here. So to make another one, you can hold down the control key and then you can click here to make another tab. So we have one and then two. So I'm going to hold down the control key and keep clicking. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 and then one here just click here to add another one and then there's the last one here so you don't have to make it exact but i'm going to have 12 of them and i'm going to kind of place these around so that they're about even so now we can make all of the different colors so on this second one here i'm going to click on this and i'm going to make it a little bit brighter and it's going to be kind of like an orangey brownish color and then for this next color here, this one is going to be a little bit darker and I'll make this a bit more brown as well. And you can totally play around with these. You can play around with the position of them. You can see if I drag these around, it's going to change how the planet looks. You can make whatever colors you find to be nice. I'm going to click on this one here and then this one is going to be kind of like a tanny peachy color. And then the next one here, this one is be going to be more gray, but it's going to have just a little bit of brown. So I'll bring it a little bit towards the orange. And then this next one here, this one is going to be kind of like a normal brown color. So I'll click on the color here, and I'll make this kind of an orangey color, and then I'll make it a bit darker. And then the next color is going to be kind of similar to this color here. And then this next one here, I'll also make this kind of like a grayish brownish color. And this next one here, I also want to make this one kind of like a brown one. So just kind of like a mid grayish brownish color, something like that. Although I want this one to be a little bit more saturated, so I'll drag it down here towards the red more. Then let's do this one here. So this one again is kind of just going to be a brown color and kind of a little bit gray. Now I also want to add a few darker areas. So if I click on this white one right here, I'm going to make this one very dark. So I'll just make it fully black. And now there's a few darker areas. And then this last one here, this will just kind of be a normal brown color. So if I click here, I'll just make this kind of brown and then make it a little bit dark. And then of course you can drag these around. You can kind of drag these around to play with the different colors. You can change the colors and get it to how you like. And if you want to add more tabs with more colors, you can do that. All right, and that is going to be it for the base color. So on this color ramp here, let's put the color into the base color of the principal shader. And then I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And I'll drag the principal shader up right here. Now I want to make this planet more rough. So if I go down here to the roughness, I'm going to turn this up to like 8.8 so that it is more rough. Now I also want to make just a very subtle atmosphere. So to do this, I'll press shift A. Let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the layer weight node. Let's drop this here and then I can control shift and select the layer weight to preview it. So you can see on the sides here, it's more white, but then the center, it is a darker color. So I'm going to take the Fresnel value of the layer weight, and I'm going to drag this into the emission strength. So this way it's going to tell it where it's going to be emitting light. And I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. Now you can't see it taking effect, and that's because we actually need to change the emission color. So if the emission is fully black, it's not going to be emitting light at all. So if I click on the color here, if I now turn it up, it's going to be emitting light. So I can just make this kind of a cool atmosphere color. So I'm going to make it kind of like a darkish bluish color. And if you want to use the exact same atmosphere color that I'm using here on the emission, you can go to the hex value and you can punch in 66A4BF. That's the exact color that I'll be using. Now you can see the atmosphere is a bit too strong and I only want to be able to see the atmosphere on the edge. So to fix this, I'll press shift A, I'll go to the search and I'll search for the color ramp node and let's put the color ramp after the layer weight. So I can now drag this black tab over and you can see if I drag it over, it's going to be more contrasty. So I can't really see the atmosphere right here in the center. I can only see it on the sides. And then I want to make it a bit more subtle. So if I click on this white tab here, I can click on the color and I can make it a bit darker. So you can see the darker it is, the less visible it's going to be. So I'm just going to make it kind of like a mid gray color. And then I also want to hold down the control key and click right here to add another tab. And then this new tab that we've made, I'm going to click on the color and I'll just make this a little bit brighter. And by making it a little bit brighter, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So it'll just make the atmosphere a little bit bigger on the edges. So we are almost done with the material, but I also want to add a very subtle bump over the surface. So we can use this noise texture right here that we've already created. 
So I'll take the factor, I'm going to drag this over here, and I'll put it into the normal of the principled shader. Now to convert the color data into normal data that the shader can use, I'll press shift A, and I'll go to the search, and I'll search for the bump node, and let's put the bump node here in between the noise and the principled shader. So just stick it here, and then this can actually go into the height value, so that is the noise texture going into the height value. And so now this bump node can actually convert it into normal data. Now it is way too strong, so I want to make it much more subtle. So here on the strength value, I'll just turn this to like a 0.1. But now if I zoom way in, you can see there's a very subtle bump over the surface. And that is the finished procedural Saturn planet material. Now I am also going to show you how to create another material for the rings, but first I want to join this together into a custom node group. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output. And then I can press Control G and that will join it together into a node group. Now if you press the tab key with the node selected, that's going to go in and out of the node group. So I'll just drag the group input right here, and I can drag it out to make it longer, and I'm going to call this Saturn Planet. So I'll now hit the tab key to go back into the node group, and I'll press the N key to open the side panel. And then let's click here on group, and you can see there are inputs and outputs. Now here on the outputs, I want to double click on this, and I'll just rename this to shader because I just like that better. So now if I go right over here, we have this group input, and we can plug values up into the group input to control it outside of the node group. So I'm going to drag the group input right down here, and the first value that I want to add is the scale. So let's take this mapping here, we'll take the scale value, and I can put that into the group input. So this will control the overall scale of the material. Now if I click here on the inputs on this scale, I want this to be one single value instead of three. So if I click on the type here, I want to change this to float instead, so it is one single number value. Now here on the default value, I want to turn this back to one, and then you can see the texture is missing. That's because I need to hit tab to go out of the node group. And then here we have the scale. Let's turn it back to one, which is the default. So now this will control the entire size of the material. So I'll hit the tab key to go back into the node group. Now I also want to be able to control the ring scale. So let's drag the group input right up here. And then on this wave texture here, we have the scale and this will control the size of those rings and how many rings you can see. So let's take the scale and I can put that into this extra socket here. And then if I double click on this, I'm going to rename it to rings scale. Now I also want to be able to control the blur of the rings. So on both of these linear light values, we have these factors. And so by changing the factors, it's going to blur those rings. So let's take the factor value. I'll put that into the extra socket and then I'll take this other factor and let's put this into the same socket right here. So they're both going into the same socket. So this one value will control both of them. And then if I double click on this, to rename it, I'm going to rename it to Rings Blur. Now I also want to be able to control the roughness of the material, so let's go right over here to the principled shader, and I'll take the roughness, and I can drag this all the way over and stick it here into the group input. And then let's click on the group input, and I'm actually going to just drag it over here so that we kind of see it closer to the principal shader. Now I also want to be able to control the brightness of the atmosphere, so I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search, and I'm going to add a hue saturation value node. So we're going to drop the hue saturation value here after this color ramp. So this value is going to make it lighter or darker, and so you can see that's going to control the visibility of the atmosphere, or how bright the atmosphere is. So I can take the value, and let's put that into the extra socket here. And then if I double click on this to rename this value, I'm going to rename this one to Atmosphere Brightness. And you can click and drag down here to make this area bigger. Now I also want to be able to control the atmosphere color, so let's take this emission value and I can put this into the extra socket, and then if I click right here on the emission, I'm going to rename this to atmosphere color. And then finally, I want to be able to control the bump strength, so let's take this strength value and I can put that into the extra socket, and then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename it to bump strength. All right, so I can drag the group input right back here. I'll just drag it behind the other nodes, kind of down here, and I will hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. And now I can zoom in here. So now let's just review the material. So we have the overall scale, then we also just have the ring scale, and then we have the rings blur. Then we have the roughness of the planet, we also have the brightness of the atmosphere, and then we also have the atmosphere color. And then finally we have the bump strength. So that is it for the Saturn planet material, so let's now do Saturn's rings. So I'll click here on the rings object, and let's just click on new here to add a new material. And I'm going to rename this material to Saturn rings. 
So for this material, I want to create a texture with some rings. However, I need to create it differently than this object here. And that is because this object is 3D, and so we could use that wave texture to make rings going along the planet. But the wave texture won't work correctly for this object here because this object is flat, and I want the rings to be going around in a circle. So for this object, I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search, and I'm going to search for a gradient texture. So we're going to use the gradient to create the rings. So let's drop the gradient here, and then I can control shift and select the gradient texture to preview it. Now, if I click on the linear here, I wanna change it to spherical instead. And so the gradient is gonna be a circle. So it's white in the middle, and then it's black on the side. Now also with the gradient texture selected, I'll press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And let's take the object and I wanna put the object into the vector of the mapping. Now you can see that the gradient has disappeared and that is because I need to change the scale of it. So I'm gonna click and drag to select these nodes and bring them back a bit. And then I can click on this mapping node here and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it and let's drop it here after the first one. So we can use this mapping to change the entire size of the material, but then we can use this mapping to change the scale of just the gradient. So right here on this mapping scale, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click and then drag down and then let go. And this way I can change all scale values at the same time. And I'm going to change this to a 0.38. And so by changing it to a value of 0.38, you can now see that it's white down here and black up here. Or if this isn't the best size for your object, you can click and drag down, and then you can hold down the shift key and drag back and forth, and you can see that by changing the scale values, that's going to change the size of the gradient. So for my object, 0.38 is good, so it's black here, and then it's white here in the center. Now just like we did with the planet object, I want to add another texture and I want to use the gradient texture to distort it to make it look like all these little rings. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for a Voronoi texture and let's drop the Voronoi after the gradient. And I want the gradient color to be going into the vector so that it distorts it. Now I also want to turn the scale up on the Voronoi. So on the Voronoi scale, I'll turn this to like a 14 so that you can see more of those rings. And then also I want to control shift and select the Voronoi texture until I can see the distance value. So the distance value is going to have those black and white lines. Now just like we did with the planet, I also want to have another group of textures, and I'm going to duplicate them and then mix them together so that there's even more detail. So I'll click and drag to box select these two nodes, and then I'll press Control shift d to duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up. And I can Control shift and select this top Voronoi to preview it. So you can see it looks the same right now, but I do want to change the scale. So here on the scale, I'm going to turn this to 300, and now you can see that we have tons of little bits of detail. So now we have this Voronoi here, and then this Forno here, and one of them is much smaller and the other one is bigger. So I want to mix them together, but before we do that, I also want to add a noise texture, and the noise texture is going to be mixed in to make it look really blurry. So I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to the search, and I'll search for a noise texture, and let's put the noise texture after the Voronoi. And then this mapping here can be going into the vector of the noise texture, and I can control Shift and select the noise texture to preview it. So I want to make this very, very detailed and noisy. I kind of want to make it look like white noise, so I want to turn the scale to like 100. I also want to turn the detail to the max of 15. And also this roughness here, I want to turn all the way up to 1 so it's super, super detailed. And then this distortion, I also want to turn the distortion to like 100 so it's very, very detailed and noisy. So I now want to mix them together with the Voronoi textures. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for the mix color and let's put the mix color in between the Voronoi and the noise. So the Voronoi texture distance is going to go into color A and then this noise texture factor is going to be going into color B. And then I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. Now right now we are just evenly blending between the Voronoi and the noise. So this mix here I can change the factor and that'll just even blend between them. However, I want the noise texture and the Voronoi texture to be distorted together. So I'm going to click on the mix here, and I'm going to change this to linear light instead. So now if I turn the factor to zero, you can see it's just the Voronoi. But then as I turn the factor up more and more, you're still going to be able to see the Voronoi, but the noise is distorting the Voronoi. So now it looks nice and noisy. 
So I now want to mix in this Forno texture up here to add even more rings. So I'll click on the linear light here. I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's drop it here. And let's take this result and I can put that into color B. And then to mix this one together, we want to take the distance of the top Voronoi and let's put that into color A. And then I can control Shift and select the linear light. So you can now see what the factor is doing. So as I turn the factor up, it's distorting it more and more. And so now we have those bigger rings with this Voronoi texture, but then we have all the little tiny rings with this Voronoi texture. So I now want to create the colors for the rings. But to do this, I'm going to use the same color ramp from this planet here. So I'll click on the planet material, and I'm going to go right over here to the planet. Let's click on the node group, and I'll hit tab to go into the node group. So what I want to do is just select this color ramp node, and then with it selected, you can press Control c to copy the node. Then I can hit tab to go out of the node group, and I can click back here on the Saturn rings, and then I'll press Control v and that is going to paste the node that we copied. So I can now just drag it and drop it here after this linear light. And so you can see it's going to make these nice brownish colors for the rings. Now there is one thing that I want to do to the colors, and that is to make them a bit brighter. So I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to the search, and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value, and let's drop this here after the color ramp. So this value is going to make it lighter or darker. So on the value here, I'm just going to turn this up to 2 so that all the colors are a bit brighter. So I can now drag the principal shader over here, and I want to take the hue saturation value, and let's put that into the base color of the principal shader. And then I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. So that is the final base color for the ring. Now I also want to turn the roughness up, so here on the roughness, let's just turn this up to a 0.8 so it's more rough. And then I also want this to be going into the bump so that the rings look a bit bumpy. So let's take the color here from the color ramp, and I want to put that into the normal. And then to convert it to normal data, I'll press Shift A, and I'll go here to the search, and I'll search for the bump node, and let's put the bump node in between the color ramp and the principal shader. So just drop it here, and then to properly convert the color data into normal data, we want to put the color into the height value value of the bump. And then it is really bumpy right now, so let's turn the strength down to just like 8.5. So now if I zoom way in, you can see it's just a little bit bumpy. Now planet rings are usually made out of big chunks of rock and big chunks of ice, but because they're so big, there's tons of little tiny particles to so little chunks of rock and ice. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, and so planet rings aren't one big mesh object, so you're going to be able to see through all the little particles. So to make it look more like planet rings, I want to add some transparency, so you can see See through the object. So after this principal shader, I'm going to press Shift A, then I'm going to go to the search, and I'm going to search for the transparent shader. So let's drop the transparent right up here, and then I want to mix between the transparent and the principal. So to do that, I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to the search, and I'll search for the mix shader. So I can put the mix shader here after the principal, but before the material output, and then I can take this transparent right here, and I actually want to put it into the bottom one, and then this principal shader can go into the top one. So I can now take the factor and I can drag this back and forth. So if the factor is turned to zero, it's just going to be using the principal, or if the factor is all the way to one, it's going to be fully transparent. However, I just want there to be some areas here and there where it's more transparent. So to do that, I need to create a mask, and we're going to put that into the factor. So I can actually do this just by using this linear light right here. So I'm going to click and drag on this result, and I'll drag out, and then I can let go, and then we can add a node here. So I'm going to add a color ramp. So let's click on the color ramp factor, and let's just drop it right here. So now the linear light is going into the color ramp. And now I can take this color from the color ramp, I can pull out a wire and stick this into the mix shader factor. So now you can see that some parts are more transparent, whereas other parts are less transparent. And I can drag these values around to control how transparent it is. So what I first want to do is switch these values. So I'm going to put the white one right over here, and then this black one I'm actually going to drag really close. Now if the values are lighter, they're going to be more transparent. So if I click on the black tab here, I can make it lighter and lighter, and if it's lighter, you're going to be able to see more through the rings. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can go to the hex value, and you can punch in a hex value of 6 Cs. So just punch that in, and now you can clearly see the stars through the rings, so they are more transparent. All right, and that is the finished Saturn rings material. But I will now show you how to join this together into a custom node group. 
So I'm going to click and drag to box select all of these nodes, and then I'll press Ctrl G to join it together into a node group, and I'll press N to open the side panel, and then here on the outputs, I just want to make sure that this is renamed to shader because I like that better. So now we can add all the custom values. So I'll click here on the group input, and I'm going to drag this down here behind the mapping. And I first want to add the overall scale. So this first mapping here, we can put the scale into the extra socket here, but then I want to make this one single value, not three values. So in the node group, if I click on the scale, I want to take the type here and change it to float. And then here on the default value, I can turn that to one. And then if I go back out of the node group with the tab key, this scale value here, I'll turn that to one. And also I can drag the node group over here and bring it next to the material output. I'm also going to make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. And then if I click here, I will copy the name and I will paste the name into the node group. So there's the overall scale. So let's select the node and go back into the node group with the tab key. So I want to be able to control both of the scales of the rings. So on this Voronoi texture here, we have this scale. And then on this Voronoi texture, we have this scale. So I'm going to drag the group input here so that it's closer to these Voronoi textures. And let's take this scale. I can put that into the extra socket. And then this scale, let's put that into another socket here. So I can now rename these. So this one, I'm going to rename to rings scale one. And then this one here, I'm going to rename to rings scale two. Now I also want to be able to control the blur of the rings. So this bottom linear light right here, this one will control the blur. So let's take the factor, I can drag this over here and stick it into the extra socket. And then I will click here to rename this and I'm going to rename this one to rings blur. And then if I go back up here to this linear light here, if I drag this, this is going to change the rings randomize. So let's drag the factor into the extra socket here on the group input. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename this one to rings randomize. Now I also want to be able to control the transparency of the rings. So to do that, we can go here to this color ramp and we can make the values brighter or darker. So to do that, I'll click on this hue saturation value. I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And then with this selected, I'll hit the backspace and that is going to reset the hue saturation value. And then I can drop it here after this color ramp. So now this value here will make it brighter or darker, and so that'll control the transparency. So I'll take the value, we can drag this over here, and I'll put it into the extra socket here. And if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename it to rings transparent. Then I want to be able to control the roughness of the material, so I'll drag the group input over here. And let's take this roughness value, put that into the extra socket, and then also I want to control the bump strength, so let's put this strength here into the extra socket. And if I double click on this, I'll rename it to bump strength. All right, so I'll click on the group input and I'll drag it right here. I'll drag it underneath the texture coordinate and I can press the N key to close the side panel and I will hit tab to go out of the node group. And so we can now review the Saturn rings material. So we have the overall scale and then we just have the ring scale one. These are the detailed rings and then ring scale two. Then we also have the rings blur and also the rings randomize. And then we also have the transparency of the rings and also the roughness and then also the bump strength. And that is it, so that is how to create this procedural Saturn planet material in Blender. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, the links are in the description. And another great way to help support this channel is by checking out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack. And my Ultimate Material Pack comes with all of my procedural materials, preset up for Blender's asset browser, with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and custom customizable node groups. And you can also learn how to create any of my procedural materials by checking out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And as I mentioned earlier, if you like creating planets in Blender and you'd like to learn how to create more planets, then I've created quite a few other planet tutorials, so I'll leave the links in the description to those other tutorials, like a Mars planet, an Earth planet, and a lava planet, and an ice planet, and a few other tutorials. So you can check out those with the links in the description. But I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.